Hello you guys, welcome back. It's time for everybody's favorite videos that I do on my channel, which is book reviews. This will be the book review for June, July, and August. I was taking an online course during the June and July, and now I'm taking another online course. And thank you, I got the highest possible grade for the one that I've already completed. Um, Strebo! <laughs> And let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine books to go over with you guys. Uh, it's actually a little bit sad because I just looked at these books and I was like, wow, I can't believe how many of them. I'm already very vague on what the context of these books were, which already tells you that a lot of them did not stand out in my mind that heavily. So anyway, I don't remember exactly which ones I read in which month, sorry, so there's gonna, I don't know. But, oh, and again, as always, I am going in the order of how I read them and not in the order of how I enjoyed them the most. That's just how I do it. So the first book I read in June is The Crocodile by Vincent Airy. Uh, for those of you guys who watched my video at the very, very beginning when all this craziness started, I mentioned to you guys that the only thing that was bringing me any joy in that time was to order books online. And this was a book I wanted to read many, many, many years ago because I wanted to read like the number one best-selling book from each country. And this was the number one for Papua New Guinea. But then when I started looking for it, the price for it online was over $1,000. And I was like, I am paying $1,000 for a book. Especially looking at this tiny little book in paperback. And, but I kept always like looking again, looking again if I could find it as a deal. And I finally found it on eBay for, I think it was like $80. And I was like, buy, 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 buy. And so what is it about? This is a story about... We follow this man, we start maybe when he's around the age of 11 or so, if I remember correctly, and we follow him throughout his life. I already forgot what his name was. Uh, and he is a Papua New Guinean. Is that what we call people from there? I don't, sorry, I don't know. He's a Papua New Guinean, and it's right, it's around, the, it starts right before World War II starts, and it ends right after World War II ends. And we kind of follow how life is in that time. It's a time of change because Papua New Guinea was part of a British colony and how like colonial life impacted his life, which was pretty a very sad life. Uh, yeah, and we follow him till his death. I personally, I, I did not enjoy the writing at all. Um, yeah, I really didn't enjoy the writing. The plot, I think if you're somebody who is... I think if you're somebody who is really woke <laughs> and really into reading about how evil colonization was, which it was, and I agree that it was, you're going to enjoy this book, even though the writing was terrible, but I'm kind of right now in this political headspace where I'm just kind of tired of being told how evil and horrible and wrong anything that has to do with the Western world is and how and so it just kind of hit me at the wrong time. If I had read this book maybe like 10 years ago when I was a little bit more liberal-minded, I probably would have soaked up the idea of the book. Um, that's not to say that I don't agree with the horribleness of the colonization. I'm sure that was, like, I absolutely believe that it was terrible and that his life was the way it is. And that, that's not the issue at all, but it's just hitting me at the wrong time. So, uh, two stars for me because I just really, really did not enjoy the writing. Then I read 
the devouring ray. Oops, did I mention? The crocodile Vincent Airy is the author. Uh, then I read The Devouring Gray by Christine Lynn Herman. This is also something I bought during that time. I told you guys I love books with sprayed edges. And because this is a really bad camera, you can't tell, but this is like a fluorescent pink. And as a big time homo, of course, when I see pink, I was like, love you. Um, what is this book about? I really enjoyed this book. I'm going to give it a 4.5. Uh, very simple read. Um, you can see the writing is huge with huge paragraphing. Um, the story is about a young girl who returns to her, I almost said ancestral home and then that would have probably got me in a lot of trouble because she is a, she's a white girl. Uh, well, whatever you would call the ancestral home of like her family had been living in this town for seven generations or something like that uh, and within the area of this town the descendants of that family and three other families they have magical abilities uh, she comes back to this town right when there is some kind of catastrophe about to happen with the magic and I don't want to give too much away um, but then like her generation of you know young adults I think they're like all in their late teens um, they have to get together and try to keep this bad thing from happening and I really think this was an interesting take on a magic system so that I really enjoyed uh, also for people who care about this, there's a lot of representation. I think there's, there's a bi character. There's a there's a lesbian there's a lesbian relationship. I don't know. There's there's a lot of stuff like that going on. So if that's something that you care about, and uh, also written in a way where it wasn't like it wasn't an issue. It was just like this is the way they were, and nobody cared. And yeah. So definitely enjoyed this, 4.5. And I enjoyed it enough, which is, and it's pretty rare, and I'll, now I'll have to insert a picture, that I ended up reading the second part. It's a duology. The second book is called The Deck of Omens. Uh, yep. Um, a little bit weaker. I didn't really like the ending that much. Um... Still simple writing, also beautiful sprayed edges. I kind of, something I liked about it is that the magic system is a little bit more sinister and a little bit more dark, and that I thought was kind of fun. So enjoyed those. All right, then I read Deep Light by Francis Hardin. Harding, hard, there's an E at the end, so it wouldn't be Harding, hard, Harding, Harding, sorry, I don't know. Uh, also a book I bought during the, during the pandemic, <laughs> because I thought this cover was gorgeous, uh, super terrible book, could not get into it at all, uh, plot, okay, we are in some kind of alternative world where there used to be these creatures that were referred to as gods that were basically like ocean monsters and uh, they were terrifying to the people basically everybody seems to live on islands and a specific ocean monster god was in control of these islands and they had to you know uh Opfo. Ah, it's even word for opfo. Sacrifice. They had to give, like, sacrifices to these gods and all this kind of stuff. And then, like, maybe, like, a hundred years or so, all the gods disappeared. But people start collecting parts of the gods that they find in the ocean as, like, relics and souvenirs. And there's supposedly some kind of magical power still attached to these items. 
Uh, we follow a young man who gets caught up in trying to get one of these relics, but then somehow the police get involved and he gets sold into slavery. And then, I don't know, he's, then he's like moved to a convent where he's working as like an undercover spy to try to figure out more about these relics. And I don't know, it's, just, it's, just a, it's a big mess. There's so much going on. And one of the big things I didn't like is part of it is written as if this was kind of, some kind of like 17th century pirate age they have you know but then other things were very modern and that's just a juxtaposition i've never liked i don't like it when they take things that people do in the ancient times like riding with like carts and donkeys and all this kind of stuff but then they have elevators and really modern homes and i don't know i just that juxtaposition in my head i just don't enjoy it like either have it's the setting be in the ancient times or have it be in modern times but putting it together, I just didn't like. But yeah, at the very end, one person collects like a lot of these relics. It becomes like super powerful and evil, and they have to then somehow defeat this person. And yeah, it was just a mess. This was a complete mess, complete fail, mess. I, I did not enjoy it at all, and this is getting a one star. Then I read The Akata Witch by ne Nedi Okorafor. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that name wrong. This was also something I bought while uh, during this whole thing. And it was a book I've, I've been thinking about buying and not buying, and I kept going back and forth. But then I found it on eBay, and I found a signed copy, and I was like, eh, I've been thinking about reading this book for a while anyway, and it's a signed copy, and it's not much more expensive, so why not? Let's do it. What is this book about? We follow the main character whose book I forgot. God, it says already on the back. Sunny. Her family moves from the U.S. back to Nigeria, where she finds out that she has magical powers. And... Her and these three other kids that also have magical powers, they start having to fight magical crimes. <sighs> so something that really bothers me is on YouTube, you're going to find a lot of people reviewing this book, and something that really upsets me is that nobody, and I... I just feel like because this was written by an African author, everybody wants to be overly PC and nobody wants to say that this is this is this book is plagiarism. It is 100% plagiarism. This is Harry Potter. It is absolutely Harry Potter. And the fact that nobody has called out this author and been like you plagiarized this book is absolutely astounding to me. And it's, it's, it's a worse version of, plagiar of Harry Potter. The writing is not nowhere near as good as in Harry Potter, but everything is the same. Instead of a wand, all of them have to have like a special kind of knife, which they do their magic with. They go to a magical school. Um, there's like one super evil bad guy uh, who is somehow connected with the main character, you know, and they, and they are the only ones who can stop it, you know. And, Everything, every, there's not one original thought in this idea. It is every, every, they all have companions, just like in Harry Potter, you know. It's just, it's just a complete ripoff. It's just a complete, complete ripoff of Harry Potter. There's nothing original about this book whatsoever. And that really upset me that nobody is willing to call that out. Sorry. I'll be the first to do it. This is 100% plagiarism. It is a worse no, not as well thought out and not as interesting version of Harry Potter and not as well written. That, so for me, this is a one star. Did not, did not enjoy the plot. Oh, also, and they, of course, also have their own, you know, like how in Harry Potter there's Quidditch. So in this one, there's also the old, a, a sport that they all have to play. And there's also a magical ball, just like in Harry Potter. It's literally, it's completely Harry Potter ripped off. It's 100% Harry Potter ripped off. The fact that this is not being called out as plagiarism is absolutely amazing to me. Uh, 
Actually, these last three months were really bad reading months. Not really happy with hardly any of the books I read. Then I read Artemis by Andy Weir. And Andy Weir is mostly known for The Martian, which I have not read. This was another book I got during this time. Actually, I think probably all of them. And again, it is a signed edition. Uh, love his writing. I do really think that he's a great writer. Something I really enjoyed about the book was the main character is a Saudi Arabian female, which I've never read before. I just thought that was, it's just nice. I, as much as I'm always like kind of going against this idea of representation and all this kind of stuff, I actually do really enjoy books that are brought and talked about from a different viewpoint because it just makes life more interesting to see things from a different viewpoint. So the main character is a Saudi Arabian girl whose name I also forgot, Jasmine Bashara. Bashara is not a Saudi name, so I just now thought of that. Um, that is not a Saudi last name. But I live in Saudi Arabia, so I know, okay? In case anybody's like, how would you know? I know I live in Saudi Arabia, and that is not a Saudi Arabian last name. Anyway, Jasmine Bashara, she was... I say she was even born. Yeah, she was born on the moon on a colony. There's a colony on the moon called Artemis. And she works as a like like a courier, courier, is that how you say it in English? Like basically like the person <laughs> a mailman. Um she's basically a mailman. Um, but she also does some illegal smuggling because there's all kinds of things that you're not allowed to have on the moon, one thing is like anything that is flammable, which they explained something about like the way they pump oxygen into the Artemis compound. Um, there's actually a lot of information given in terms of how things function, how they work together, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, that's something I really enjoy when I read Jurassic Park. There's also like technological aspects to it. Uh, I think for a lot of people that's really dry and they wouldn't enjoy it, but I actually found that really interesting, uh, trying to kind of create how all of this would make sense. Anyway, at some point in the book, she delivers some smuggling goods to, I guess, the moon's richest man, and her, I for, yeah, I forget if it was like right after she left. Yeah, like right after she left, that man is murdered, and she becomes like a suspect in his murder, and then she decides that she wants to clear her name. She doesn't trust the police to do it, so she needs to do it on her own. Uh... <laughs> the idea is great. Like I said, I like the fact that it's an original character. Uh, I like the writing. I actually liked the idea when the plot first began. Uh, but there's just like, a, I just have a huge, there's one thing that I just could not get over that just drove me absolutely crazy. Jasmine is the smartest human being that has ever existed, ever will exist. She knows everything. She can comp she can like do computations in her mind that, you know, a computer would need time to do. You know, she's just like everything. Like she knows how to be a super spy. She knows how to everything. There's nothing this woman cannot do. She is, she is beautiful. She's intelligent. She's agile. She can be a spy. She can, like anything. However, her one motivation in life is to become a millionaire so that she can move out of her one bedroom apartment into like a luxury house in Artemis. That doesn't make any sense. Like it just, her character makes no sense. So she is absolutely the most intelligent human being who's ever existed, but she didn't like school. So she decided to drop out and become a courier. And now she's always like, oh my God, my life as a courier is so difficult. I don't make enough money. I have to smuggle. And I'm like, if you're such a super genius, why couldn't you have just gotten any other job? Any other job that existed in this colony 
You could have done it. You're literally the smartest human being that ever existed. But for whatever reason, she became a courier. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. It just literally doesn't make any sense. Like, she's when she's going and trying to find out who the murderer is, I mean, she just picks up on all the clues, even though she didn't study forensics or anything. She notices all the clues. She knows how to take things apart and put them back together and to create everything. And it, so... I just had a huge problem with the fact that it was just like, it doesn't make any sense. If you're motive, if you're, if you're monetarily motivated and you're a super genius, you don't have to work as a courier and then complain about the fact that you don't make a lot of money. So that, 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 that was just and the fact that she's just constantly complaining about how she's not making any money just drove me nuts. Cause I was like, you're the smartest human being who's ever lived. You tell me you can't think of any other way to make money. It just didn't make any sense. Then there's also this really cringy subplot about how all men are shit and because she was treated badly by men in the past and she has a friend. Oh, God. I, I just don't understand why this subplot had to exist. She has a friend who's like an inventor. And this inventor, he invented the reusable condom, which already in and of itself is disgusting. It was just like, and there's just this whole like subplot about the inventor being like, "So are we gonna test the reusable condom?" And she's like, <laughs> "We will eventually, I promise." You know, and I'm just like, "Why? Why is this even in here?" What? First of all, reusable condom, like, what a gross idea! I don't understand why Andy Weir. What? What? Why? Why is this subplot in here? I just is no ew. So that just, I mean, this could have, if the plot, if, if he could have just, you know, and she's gorgeous, but all the men are just like falling over her and, and she's always dressing really slutty and provocatively. And I'm like, you know, she's Saudi Arabian and I don't know, like, and then there's this whole like subplot about how she's Muslim and. She knows that she shouldn't dress like a slut, but, but she, I don't know, I don't know, I, no, no, sorry, sorry, Andy Weir, this was, this was a fail. Two star. Then I read Heartbreak Tango by Manuel Puig. This is also, oh god, I don't even want to open the book. This book is so old and like water damaged. Um... I love this cover. I love this cover. That's actually what really, I was just like, I saw that cover and I was like, I want this book. But also this is a signed edition. I'm a little bit scared to open it because the first time I opened it, for any super book lover, you are going to start screaming. Cover your ears if you're a super book lover because the moment I say this, you're probably going to start screaming and you're, you're going to start crying. This, because this book is so old and moldy, I open it and the first four pages fell out. Because, you know, like the glue kind of, some old books, the glue kind of starts cracking. And the book, the page that was signed fell out. And I literally, I don't even know, I like literally sobbed for like two hours. I was like, no! And I had to kind of try to put it back in, but it didn't work that well. So I, I don't even want to show you guys. Like it, it's it's such a it's such a heartbreak story for anybody who's a book lover. But it was a beautiful cover and a signed edition. I don't know once the page that has the signature fall out fell out if it still counts as a signed edition, a semi signed edition. Um, what is this book about? So. This book is about this man, Juan Carlos, if I remember correctly. Yes, Juan Carlos. This takes place in Argentina. I can't say Argent. I can't say it in English. I always say Argentina, which is the German way. But I think in English, Argentina. Argentina in English? Argentina. Um, uh, he, in the very first chapter, he dies. So it's not a spoiler. He dies. And he has three women, which I guess is what the representation of these three, who all were madly in love with him. He was the love of their life. And they all write about their relationship with him. Like one of them writes 
it in terms of a correspondence with his mother after he died. She's writing about how much she loved him. One is in flashbacks, and one we only find out like through secondary characters. There was like there was one more woman. There was one more mysterious woman that he had an affair with. Uh, enjoyed the writing. Enjoyed the plot. I mean, it's nothing that's going to blow you away. It's kind of a flashback love story um, kind of thing. It takes place, I think, in like the 1920s and 30s. Yeah, it's okay. I enjoyed it. Uh, it's like a three star. I don't know if I would tell anybody they have to run out and get it, but it's, it wasn't a bad book, right? I, then I read The Perfect Assassin by K.A. Dorr. Based off of this cover, this would not be a book I would ever pick up. Ever, <laughs> ever, ever. If I saw a book like this just laying out in a bookstore, would never pick this up. Uh, don't 100% remember how I found it. I found it on Amazon. I was probably clicking through like, gay and lesbian fiction. I, I told you guys a million times, I'm always trying to find good gay and lesbian books to read. And so, what's going on? We are in a fictional world that is akin to the Middle East, circa the time of like the movie Aladdin uh, is when this takes place. Like people are still living very tribal and uh, we are in this city called Gilead. Gilead? Nah, did. Sorry, Gilead. Where's Gilead from? Gilead is something too. Um, so we're in this city called Gadid, and we're and there is a group of people who are assassins, but they are legal assassins in that they work for the government. And they only take on legal contracts. They kill people who, you know, yeah, would be bad for the overall well-being of the city, which is legit. It's not like they just assassinate people who have different opinions or whatever, but they, like, assassinate people who waste water or something like that, which, if you live in a desert, that makes sense, okay? And so they have a very vital role. And uh, the main character, Amistan, uh, he just finished his uh, assassin training. And during, during one night, he's out with a friend of his. He finds a dead body on, on like a roof. And in this world, you can't just leave dead bodies out. You can't just hide dead bodies and leave them to rot because the, the soul of the body takes on its own entity. It becomes a djinn or a genie, uh, basically. And they become evil genies and start hurting people who are still alive. So even the assassins, when they kill somebody, they have to kill this person in a public place so that the people who are in charge of making sure that the soul goes to heaven that that actually happens and the soul doesn't turn into a genie and start hurting people and haunting people and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, they find a dead body. It was not somebody that was killed by an assassin. They, they All the assassins get together trying to figure out who was the murderer and then it basically becomes a murder mystery. Uh, the reason it's under a gay and lesbian is the main character, Amastan, he is an asexual gay man. I don't know if that's the way it's called. He's he's attracted to men, but he is asexual, I guess. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed the writing. Um, enjoyed the plot. Uh, I enjoyed the romance that kind of gets like because he's kind of is he asexual? I don't know. I, I, I get. He's asexual, maybe gay sexual interested. He at some point meets a young man. I like the fact that in this book, it was a very slow burn romance. It was a romantic romance. You know, one of the big things I don't generally like about gay, gay, lesbian books are different, but gay men books, they're basically always just porn. They're basically porn. Um, 
they meet right away, they have sex, they're all, they're gorgeous, they have six packs, and, ugh, and it's just constant, and, like, it's just all about sex, and having sex with as many guys as you want, there's actually no plot, it's, it's basically just porn in, in written form. So this was not that, it was a very slow, born, the, the romance was very cute, it was very well thought out, um, so I enjoyed that too, and... This is a trilogy, however, it doesn't follow the same character, which is why I'm not going to continue. If it followed the same character, I probably would continue with the series, but it continues in the same world, but it starts following other characters, and I'm not interested in that. So I would probably, yeah, maybe a 3.5. I wasn't super blown away by it, but yeah, it's a, it's a cute read. And then the last book I read, this is kind of an overlap, August into September. I just finished it on the 1st. And that is Recursion by Blake Crouch. Really enjoyed the writing. I think he is a very gifted author. Uh, plot. Decent. It got a little repetitive to me towards the end. Um... What's going on in this book? So there is a scientist and she invents basically like a memory machine because her mother suffers from Alzheimer's and she wants to somehow help people alleviate losing memories and all this kind of stuff. And she creates this memory machine, but it has a secondary function that she did not foresee. And that is time travel, which they tried to explain how it functions as time travel. I think it's a little bit sloppy the way it's explained. And I was like, mm, for the sake of just reading fiction, fine, I'll go along with it. But I was like, mm, I'm, not, I'm not really buying this. I'm not really enjoying this. I thought it was a little bit sloppy. But anyway, it turns, it turns out that this memory machine also can work as a time machine. And what complications it has to the world to create a time machine. Because in this book, the time machine, it creates a, 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 new, a new timeline, but people remember the memories of the original timeline. So let's say I died right now, somebody went back in time, saved me from dying, and there was a new timeline created, well, I would still have the memories of dying. And what this constant, people keep going back in time, and people keep having more and more memories of all these different timelines, but, and how that works with people's psyche and stuff. So that, it was kind of interesting, but towards the end, it just kind of got so repetitive. Like, they were just constantly going back in time. And the scientist lady who didn't like the fact that the, that her memory machine was being used that way was just like, no, we can't do this. Go back in time. No, we can't do this. Go back in time. And I, I just feel like it could have probably been cut down by 50 pages um, and it would have made it a superior novel. Uh, but it was like, an, it was kind of an original idea and I loved this cover. So... What am I doing? Let's also give this a 3.5. Okay? So, that is my book reading experience through August. Let me know if you read any of these books, if you disagree or agree with how I rated them, if you have any book recommendations, if you just want to tell me, stop doing book reviews, we don't find them interesting. That is, of course, also an option. And, yep, yeah, take care and be safe.